So we've looked at averages and now we're going to look at spread which is another way to um, look at our data because an, an average is just one single um, value and we want to have a bit more idea about what our data is looking like. For example you could have um, an average of seven, five numbers that have an average of seven, that could be seven 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 seven, so five lots of seven, or it could be five six seven eight nine. Both of those groups have an average of seven but they are different. So we need to be able to um, look at some ways to measure spread. The simplest is doing the range which is the highest value minus the lowest value but it doesn't give us an awful lot of information. What you need to be able to do is find the variance and the standard deviation. These both give us some idea of how much the data varies, varies away in relation to the mean. Now we start with this x minus x bar. That's the deviation or the difference of the x value from the mean. Remember x bar just means the mean. So if we take, take our value and subtract the mean, we'll know how far that value is away from the mean. Then we square that to make sure that all of those values are positive because if you're then trying to put these together, the positives and the negatives would cancel each other out and not give us a true idea of what the spread is. Then we're going to add up all of those differences and divide by the average, uh, or get an average of those by dividing by how many values we did this for. Now this particular formula at this stage, this gives us what's called the variance and if we square root it, it gives us the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance. Now standard deviation often gets shortened to SD or it's uh, the symbol that's used to represent standard deviation is this lowercase sigma here which is just a circle with a little flick at the top. So just rewriting that um, formula for us there. Now in this form it's actually quite hard to work out. We would have to go through and do it for every single value of x to be able to use this formula. So most of the time we'll be using this one which is equivalent. Now if you want a proof of that you can look at it, it's in your textbook or you can google it but you don't need to know the proof of how one becomes the other you just need to be able to use this one that's a little bit easier to calculate. Let's have a look at it with an example. So Michael buys 25 bags of lollies and counts x the number of lollies in each bag and the results are summarised so that we know that the sum of x is 675, so if we added up all the lollies in all the bags it would get 675, and the sum of x squared is 19,725, so that means count the number of lollies in each bag, square it, and then add that up for all 25 bags. We want to find the mean x bar and the sta standard deviation. Okay, There's the, the important bits of information that we need in the question. So first we'll work out x bar, which is add up all of the, let me just take that back a little bit. So add up all of um, the values that we've got for each of the bags, so that's the 675, and divide by the 25 bags and we get an average of 27 in each bag. Next doing the standard deviation, we're substituting in the values that we've been told, so the sum of x squared we're told in the question is that 19,725 divide it by n, our number of bags, 25 take away the mean squared that we've just worked out of 27 square root that all and we get 7.7 .7. we can do the same things if we have our information as a frequency distribution so if it's summarised in a table you need to know how to unpack the information from there so the standard deviation this time we'll be doing it times by the frequencies Okay, like you, like you did for working out the mean from a frequency table. If you don't remember how to do that, just look at the previous video. So here's our example. Now I've just borrowed this one from the example we did in, in the last video where we were finding the mean from a table. So this was the number of siblings um, and how many people said they had that many siblings. So for example, uh, 15 people said they had three siblings. 
So first of all we need to work out those x squared values because we're going to then times them by f. Next line is when we do times it by f, those are the numbers that we get. We also need to total up those frequencies and the x squared f line because we're going to need both of those sum values. We will need the mean. So that's what we did in the last video. If you don't remember how to do that, go back and look at it now. So we've got the mean of 1.39. We need to put that into our formula for the standard deviation. So we're going to take that 644, divide it by the 204, take away the mean squared and square root it. Final answer is 1.10 to three significant figures. And finally, for everybody that likes the jokes at the end, just a little recap of your limits and sequences.